Hi, my name is Yuki and I run a small nonprofit in Washington, D.C. dedicated to um, promoting U.S.-Japan and U.S.-Korea student exchange at the college level. Mm -hmm. So I get to um, interact with uh, many very bright young leaders um, and uh, students. And I think Japan and Korea does suffer in a, in a similar situation as the U.S., the, uh, the, the prime that is kind of paid on the atom one type and uh, success and achievement and recognition in society. Do you have a uh, um, practical suggestion as to what we can do to uh, instill the values of having an inner, you know, enriched inner life for students? Because I think you mentioned that having, you know, having a great teacher inspire them or, you know, waiting for the students to awaken themselves is are one of the two ways. Right. But uh, is there any practical ways we can and instill these, what you just talked about in, right. the, in the younger generations. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I don't think it's necessary to reinvent the wheel here. People have known about um, how to instill character for a long time, and there are really two methods, or maybe three. The first is through habits, and this would be the Alcoholics Anonymous method, which is the fake it till you make it, make it method. You, you, you don't do in inner change first, according to this method, and then wait for outer change. You do the outer change, and the outer change helps you outward in. And that would be one method, and for the, short, for the sake of shorthand or theological shorthand, frankly, in, in our context, in the Western context, that's more or less the Jewish method. We, we follow the rules, and then the rules hopefully build the person. Then there's another method, which is the inward-out method, which is you experience what Augustine experienced, and inner transformation, which then pervades your whole life. And we'll call that the Christian method. And so I, I think that's powerful. I, I was talking to Ariana last night. We were, I was at a village in Mozambique where there were no adults, just kids and grandparents. The adults had all been killed by AIDS. And so the grandparents were raising the kids, and we asked the grandparents, are the kids replicating the behavior that caused their parents to die, even after watching their parents die? And the grandparents told us, yes. They're doing exactly the same things. And so Western aid agencies come in and try to get them to change their behavior. And without much success, you give them the risk analysis statistics, doesn't seem to work. But the thing they told us that worked was a church we went to, which was under open sky in a sort of a rough wood building, where, run by the grandmothers essentially, where they said, we're not gonna focus on AIDS, we're gonna give you something to transform your whole life and give you eternal life and AIDS behaving responsibly would be a byproduct of that. And that's a big lever. So that would be the, I'm crudely, I'm oversimplifying here, but then there's a third method, which would be the more academic method, which is the exemplar method. We're great at imitating. And from Plutarch on, we've understood if we're around people who are admirable, we mimic them and we try to be like them. And uh, so that's why I talk about Augustine, that's why I talk about Samuel Johnson, that's why I talk about Dorothy Day. From just seeing how great people live, they hold up a standard. There's a phrase, I think a Greek phrase, most bad behavior is not caused by evil, it's caused by the lack of a proper standard. And so I, I do think we've sort of lost that propriety of standards. Uh, and so I think these are the three, the three ways you build character. And the four, one final thing I've said, because I've said this in Yale, I said in an academic environment, I don't want to leave the impression you have to study your way to good character. Uh, if you look at somebody who did a study of moral philosophers, they behave no better than anybody else. And usually it's, it's life more than, than what you're reading in a book. But the book can fill in the life you've led.